I made mistakes when during my space walks. One was really bad. I, I stripped the screw during a repair of the of the Hubble, and there was no backup plan for this because it was such a simple task. Even I couldn't mess it up, but I messed it up. And I remember looking down at the planet I, before I fessed up to the ground. I kind of leaned out of the telescope. I was in a foot restraint so I could lean back and take a look at Earth. And uh, we were over the Pacific Ocean, and I'm in space, and I couldn't even imagine a hardware store I could go to. To get help and uh it's like who's going to help me now but i reached out to the mission control center and for i don't know an hour uh, between an hour and an hour and a half we tried all kinds of things and then they came up with a solution to fix it which i never thought we were going to be able to fix it but they came up with something and then i learned later about what was going on i couldn't see them right and but it was a guy in a, in a back room in houston that had an idea he called up to the goddard space flight center in maryland and he did a little test in a clean room this is on a sunday they're all doing this and they came back with the results and they just talked about it. So it was like the whole team sprang into action to help me. I couldn't see any of this. And uh, I, I try to recommend to people to reach out to their mission control center whenever you need help. People are still there. They're, they're there waiting to help you, just like you should be there waiting, not waiting, but you know, being available to help them be mission control for others so that when one of your teammates needs something, you're there for them. And people should know they can reach out to you and it's not going to be a bother. In the same in the other direction, reach out to your control center when you need them. Don't hesitate. Um, and that, I think, was was a lesson I learned as an astronaut that applies to Earth, but even more so in these times where we don't see each other. But, you know, the teams are still in place. We just don't we're not in the same room, just like the three of us are in different parts of the world right now, apparently. And we're still able to communicate. Well, mistakes definitely happen. And you have a story in the book where someone who you look up to makes a mistake in front of you and you're new on the job and now you are re hearing the mistake but going along with that person's mistake instead of speaking up and how important it is to find your voice in those moments even if the other person who's leading the charge has more experience more knowledge and shouldn't be making that mistake yeah that was uh, another thing aj that uh i thought was important about our culture that i learned early on and you know People can tell you these things, right? You know, oh, you should do this and you should speak up and all that. But, you know, what, what the, the book is a series. There's a bunch of stories to try to help people picture what was happening and how important some of these rules or guidelines are. So we were encouraged to speak up. And for me, what happened was, as you mentioned, it was one of my early training flights in the T-38. And uh, I was flying with a very experienced pilot. And as we were taking off, our heading was changed by the tower. And it was at night, you know, when things happen at night is usually an indication of it just, you know, lose awareness at night. It's always things are more likely to go wrong, I think, when it's nighttime for whatever reason. You can't see as well and you lose some of that awareness. Anyway, so I put the correct heading in the flight computer and we rolled down the runway and my buddy starts turning in the wrong direction. Now, I had about three hours in the airplane at this point. I had my, this was my fourth time inside. I wasn't even sure how to strap in and get the oxygen mask on, you know, and everything. So I, this guy had about 8,000 hours or whatever, you know, thousands of hours of experience. He, had, he was a test pilot with the Air Force, Jim Kelly Vegas was his name, and, and he was a combat veteran. <laughs> so I'm like, this guy knows what he's doing. What the hell do I know? And uh, so as he's going in the wrong direction, I don't say anything. And then I was like, I must be wrong. And uh, then the tower comes over the communication loop and you know, over the headset and is like, you know, NASA 922, turn right now, sharp turn right now. And he immediately whips the airplane around. It's a very, very maneuverable airplane, so we're able to get out of the way. What it was is that, unbeknownst to us, another airplane had showed up in the time that we got our initial clearance and the time we reached the runway, and we almost had a midair with a guy coming in to land. And, uh, you know, my, my buddy said, what the heck was that? Did he change our heading? I go, yeah, yeah I put it right in the flight computer. And he goes, you saw me go the wrong direction? You didn't say anything? And they said, I thought you knew what you were doing. You know, I, there you go. And that was the end of that until we landed uh, about an hour later and uh, we came down the ladders and of the cockpits. And, you know, he said, look, Matt, you know, I, I made a wrong turn and that almost got us killed. But you didn't speak up and that almost got us killed as well. You got to learn to speak up. So I, I th that I think is really important. And, and what he you know, what he said he would have done and what what I found in further times was that when you're wrong, it's OK to be wrong. It's better to be wrong uh, speak up and be wrong than to stay silent and be correct and then something bad happens and then i never did that again and I, I like, you know hey especially when you have a close call like that you learn your lesson but hopefully it doesn't take that 
for people to understand um, that it's, it's important to speak up, but it's all, I think it's more important for the leadership to encourage that. You know, there was, you know, there was, and thank you is always a good thing to say in a cockpit is what we would say. So if I would have told Vegas, hey, you're supposed to be going to, you know, heading 250, and he'd be like, no, no, they change. He would explain it to me, but, you know, thanks for speaking up. Is Thank you is always a good thing to say in the cockpit because sometimes, especially new people, are going to say things that really aren't correct, right? They may have an idea that's not going to work or we've, or we've already tried that, but you don't yell at them. That's not the way it was with, at NASA. It was, you know, you always, you always try to encourage them. Says, oh, you know, this, we can't do that for this, this, and this reason, but thank you for bringing that up because the next time they might have the good reason. And if you react badly to the bad idea, then you're not going to hear about the good idea. People are going to shut up. I think it was always important, especially for leadership, to encourage that.